Okay, I made an example of an FAQ page. And here it is. We can download it and take a look at it. This might be how you could have organized the first page of the assignment. You don't have to, you didn't have to do this, but this is showing one way that you could do this. What is HTML? What is CSS? What is JavaScript? And then there's a back to top link with that. Um, notice what I have here. This is called Greek text. Greek text is a tool that's used by graphic, has been used by graphic designers for ages. And it's also used by web designers. And Greek text is kind of a placeholder text. So for example, if I was designing this page, maybe someone else was going to write, maybe I'm the web designer and someone else is going to write this article. All right? Or maybe I'm going to write it later on, but I haven't written it yet. I may still want to get my layout correct, all right? So I want sort of text to hold the place. So instead of typing in like I did, I think in the one example, blah, 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 all right, there's something that's called Greek text that looks like it's, it's called Greek text, but it really looks more like Latin. So I don't know why they call it that. Um, and you could actually generate some. There's a website that allows you to generate Greek text. And... You could say I want five paragraphs of it, and it will generate five paragraphs of it that you can copy and paste into your document. And again, you wouldn't do this on, a, on an assignment that you're turning in, right? You wouldn't do this on a real project, but you would do this while you were working on a project if there was a certain text that you didn't have completed yet, but you still wanted to work on the layout of the web page. You might use this Greek text. So that's kind of what I did here. All right, let's look at the HTML for this, and I'll edit it in Notepad++. Notice that's a doc type. The HTML tag contains everything. Everything is in the HTML tag. The HTML tag itself has a head section and a body section. All right. Everything that's going to appear on the page itself appears in the body. So right now, the only thing in the head is the title. We saw something else that you could put in the head last time, and that is CSS. But this doesn't have any CSS in it. The body is comprised of those HTML5 structure tags, those, those main sections of the page, the tags for those that we talked about last time. So there's a header. And the header is sort of like the banner on the top of the page that specifies sort of the main purpose of the page, who the page is for, the organization that made it, that sort of information. I then have navigation, how to navigate through the, different, through the page. The navigation could contain links within the page or could contain links to other pages, depending on how the particular page is. Notice I used an unordered list and not an ordered list. Um, that was purely my choice. I could have very well made these an unordered list. And it contains LIs, and each LI is a link, and each link has an href of pound sign an ID name. And then I have on the header that ID. So when I click this link, it knows to jump to this section of the page. Each section then, each, each answer, each question has its own section. That contains an H2 and contains a couple of paragraphs and contains a link back to the top of the page. 
So I have that for the three questions in my FAQ. Finally, at the very bottom, I have the footer. Most of your web pages are going to be like this, if you think about it. Most of the pages that you see on the web are like this. There's sort of some sort of banner at the top of the page that is in the header tag. There's a navigation section that shows you how to get around the site. There are one or more than one sections. And remember again, section tag, there's also an article tag and there's an aside tag. And those are all used to indicate just different sections of the page. It's really your, the section and the article are more or less interchangeable. You just decide if it's, if it makes more sense to you to call the section or to call it an article. The aside is when you have something that's related to another section on the page. You can use the aside tag to sort of um, uh, indicate that. And then finally at the bottom of the page you have the footer. Now, by itself this doesn't do much for you. This doesn't look, I mean, if I got rid of all those tags, it would still pretty much look the same. But when we get into CSS, we'll be able to visually show our users where different sections of the page uh, is. Uh, are simply by, by using color coding, by using borders, by indenting, things such as that. So this is one of those things that you might not right this moment see the benefit of, but when we get into CSS coding, you will see the benefit of that. All right? Questions about this? All right? Okay. Um, let's see, what is, what is next? What I like to do now is I like to build a, a brand new page, all right, or, or set of pages. We might do actually a, a couple different pages, all right? And I'm going to do this for a couple reasons. I'm going to do this, number one, to review all the stuff that we've talked about so far, and number two, to start playing around with CSS, cascading style sheets, a little bit more. All right. Um, and lastly, I'm going to do it to reinforce the idea that uh, we haven't really talked about a lot in this class, but the idea of planning your web page before you start. All right, planning your page or pages before you start. That's really important. Uh, if you notice your project, your project consists of two steps, planning it and then actually doing it. And we'll talk a lot about planning and designing our pages before we create them. So we haven't really talked about that much yet, but what I want to do now is I want to, want to start talking about that. <coughs> so let me sketch out the kind of page that I want. All right? Uh, coming up in, in a few weeks now is the Winter Olympics, and I, I love watching the Winter Olympics. I love all those oddball sports, right, like cur curling where they, they have brooms and they sweep the ice as they, roll, they, they, they slide a stone on it. Biathlon, where they ski and shoot. They stop every so often and shoot at targets, which must be really tough because you're exhausted from skiing, you know, who knows how many miles. And then you have to stop and hold steady to shoot. So I, I think that's a cool sport. And hockey and skiing and all those things, ski jumping. So I, I love watching the Winter Olympics. So let's do, let's do a web page about the Winter Olympics. And actually, let's do more than a web page. Let's do a couple of web pages about the Winter Olympics. So, I'm going to create two pages about the Winter Olympics. All right, I, I could obviously create, like, if this was my semester project, I could probably create eight or ten pages about it. But for this example, since this is just a, a short example, I'm just going to create a couple pages. I'm going to create a home page. We're going to work this example for a few lectures. So we might not do everything all today, but we'll definitely get started with it. So I'm going to create a home page and a page about skiing. I think this is how 
you spell it? Where it's going to be is in Korea, Pyeongchang. I think that's how you spell it. But if it's not, um, we can, we'll correct it later. So my homepage is going to look like this. create links even if we don't create the pages. So I'm going to have a skiing link, speed skating, figure skating, hockey, curling, Wedding. I don't know, that's, that's, not, that's enough. Probably a few more. And then I'm going to have a paragraph that's the overview. And, you know, let's say I was making this website for some organization for a, a, a sports magazine. And I'm the web designer, and uh, uh, someone else has got to write the, the overview. So I don't know exactly what that's going to say yet. So I'm going to use right now Greek text for that just to get the layout of it right. All right, so that's what I wanted to look at. And then I'm gonna have at the very bottom of the page sort of a copyright notice. And maybe a link to my email. All right, so that's a sketch. Even if you're doing a simple web page, it pays to do a sketch first. Because really, by doing the sketch, you're doing a lot of the work already, right? This is going to be in your header tag. This is your nav. This is going to be a section. And this is going to be a footer. So we've already defined the tags that we're going to use for this. This is going to be an, an unordered list because I just made up the order of that. It's not some specific order. All right. Each list is going to have a, a, a link in it. It's going to be a section with a paragraph in it. And this is just going to be some text. And we will have a link in there. So we kind of already know the tags just by sketching it out. We just have to go and do it. All right. So that's going to be our home page. What I'm going to do then is... Presumably, if I was making a page uh, for each sport, I would go through this for each sport, but we'll just talk about skiing, all right? What I would do then is I'd have a link to the skiing page, and the skiing page would look like this. So 
We've already thought through a lot of it. Uh, any task that you have, it's better to do some preparation work and thinking through and planning and designing it before you go and do it. You know, your English teachers have probably told you that for forever, right? Don't just sit down and, and write your term paper. Uh, make an outline first. Make a rough draft. Go through and revise the rough draft. Proofread it. Read it. And really, that extra work, sometimes when we're in a rush, we think, oh, I can get by without doing it. But when you start getting into really big jobs, that planning becomes really critical. So we want to start off on a good foot. And therefore, I would urge you to sketch out any page that you do uh, from now on before you actually go ahead and do it. So we're going to start out, we're going to do this page. All right? Simple page, and then we're going to add some style to it. That is, we're going to add some colors to it, uh, which we introduced to you last time. All right. So let me go and create a web page. I'm going to close out of this. Close out of this. I'm going to create a new page. Oops. The top of every web page is the very first thing is a doc type. This indicates the version. This helps tell the browser the version of HTML we're going to be using. In this case, it's HTML5. The main tag that goes around everything is the HTML tag. Notice what I'm doing. As soon as I one second, notice, as soon as I put in an HTML tag, I'm putting in the end HTML tag so I don't forget. Yes. The projector's not on. The projector's not on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised this is the first time I did that in this class. Because I usually do that, like, by this point of the semester, I've usually done it like three or four times already. So I'm doing pretty good. All right. Okay. So notice what I did. As soon as I put in the start HTML tag, I put in the end HTML tag. All right? That way, I won't forget about it later on. All right? And remember, the idea is, is that we want to follow the rules of HTML because that will help you uh, guarantee that your page is going to work across different browsers. So, each web page contains a head section. So I put the start head and head, and a body section. As soon as I put in the end, end head, uh, end body, or start body, I put in the end body. Notice that I'm properly nesting it, and notice that I'm indenting it to show how it's nested. The head is inside the HTML document, so it's indented to show that it's contained in that. Likewise with the body. The body isn't part of the head, and the head isn't part of the body, right? So therefore, they're not enclosed. You know, the head isn't indented inside the body or vice versa. They're, they're separate on the same level. In the head section, the only thing we're going to have right off the bat is the title. So I'm going to make the title for this page 2018 Winter Olympics. Home. The body is going to consist of a header section, which is sort of the banner that appears on the top. Yes? Are you going to be posting this on Canvas as we do it? Absolutely. Okay. That way you don't. I, I generally do that. I do that for a couple reasons. For one thing, the recording on the video is not always the best. It's, it's sometimes hard to see what's on the screen. So I, I post the, the code so you can follow along with the code as well. Uh, in addition, uh, that way you don't have to like write down everything, every tag that I put too. So uh, you can write down some maybe, you know, still take notes, but you can come back and look at the example. All right, so I'm going to have a header, a nav, A section, and a footer. Okay. 
So my header Navigation. I'm going to have to pretend I know what the names of those other pages are, but that's okay because I'm the one making those other pages, so I'll just make up names from now and I'll just remember when I create those pages to use the names I made up. Now this is going to be another one of my pages and it's going to be in the same folder. So I just need to give the name of the page. So skiing.html. And I'll just have to remember when I create the skiing page to call it skiing.html. I'm going to copy this then a couple times. One of the reasons I use Greek text for some of these things because I'm the world's slowest typer. Does Greek text automatically fill in for you, or what do you mean? Does it automatically? Like, fill? how do you get it to uh, be on your page? Oh, you you just find a block of text from a site that has Greek text and you paste it in. Okay. So. This page is a generator of Greek text. Let's say I want one paragraph. I just go and copy that. All right, so I have my navigation. I have my section, which I'll put a paragraph tag. And then finally I'm going to put something in the footer. I'll put a paragraph and I'll say ahref equals mail to mzellers at Lorraine ccc.edu. Email me with any questions and I'll put copyright 2018 all right so I've created the page I'm now going to save it and if I'm in notepad plus plus when I click save I don't want to save it as a normal text file. So whether I'm in Notepad or Notepad++, I'm going to change that from ordinary text file. 
and notepad and just plain old notepad, I'll pick all files and I'll save it with .html. With notepad++, I will go and I will pick that I want to save it as an HTML file, hypertext, and I can give it a name. Since this is meant to be my home page, I'm going to call it index.html. Index.html is sort of a, a, a common name for home pages. So I'm going to call it index.html. I'm going to save it. And I forgot to add it to the navigation. So I'm going to put the home page in the navigation as well. Why do I need it in there? Excellent question. Because I'm going to copy this navigation on all my other pages. And so just to keep it consistent, I'm going to have the home page really on every page. So there's a little bit of redundancy there. Like the page that you're on is still going to be in the navigation. But I think that's worth it to get to consistency. There are things that we can actually do with CSS to highlight and to let the person know, hey, you're on that page. And we can look at doing some of those things. Probably not today, but later on in the semester. Okay, so I save it. I can bring it up. And it looks like this. All right. It wants to translate it. It sees Pyeongchang. Nope. All right. So that's the home page, which is pretty much what we had sketched up there. Any questions about this? It should be largely a review of the stuff that we went over last time. All right, and the time before. Did you use section for your the three? Yes, I used this as a section. So why do you use that instead of a paragraph? Well, I used a section and a paragraph. All right, if you look here, the section contains a paragraph. A section is just some things that, that are logically grouped together. A section might consist of a picture, a three paragraphs, and a list of things. So in this case, there, the section only contains a paragraph. But a section is, again, any related thing. So anything that was on the home page, I could all put in that one section. Yes? Um, for our second lab, can we use Greek text instead of text? No. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's not for real labs. You can use it like when you're playing with it and creating it, but by, by the time you turn it in, you need to, to do that. And if I were to turn this into myself, I would deduct points. So I am consistent. All right. Okay. Now. Oh, one thing. What if we want to have the copyright symbol instead of the word copyright? How can we do that? There's a whole set of HTML special characters. And if you Google HTML special characters, you can see a list of them. How to get certain things. Um, Here's a good list of them. Um, there are things like braces, uh, at signs, whatever that is. The symbol for a yen. The symbol for a registered trademark. Some characters in, in other languages uh, that are used in other languages with uh, accents, Greek letters, if you're doing something mathematical and you want to use Greek letters in it. Um, somewhere here, I saw the trademark one. Are you talking about the copyright? Yeah. That was all the way at the top of it. Oh. Oh. There we go. So, if we say ampersand copy semicolon, 
that'll be the copyright symbol. So if you have any symbols that you can't type on the keyboard and you want to include it, you can type in, you can look up to see what the special character is, uh, is and use that. Yes? Can you, um, if you just go to like a different web page that has that symbol, can it copy and paste in what it is? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Uh, it would probably depend on like exactly what, what text editor you're using and where you're copying it from and all that. And there you see we got the little C with the circle around it for the copy, right? All right, let's, let's play around with colors and let's review the stuff that we went over last time. All right? So, um, I'm going to start out just making things um, any, any color. Um, I'm going to make... Um, I, I'll just pick a color to start out with. And again, I'll do similar to what we did last time where I'm not going to really pay attention to the colors. I'm just going to use them as an example. And then we'll worry about what if we wanted to make the colors look good together. All right? So, your style code is going to be in the head. Next week, we're going to learn a slightly different way to use style code, but it will still be in the head. Your style will consist of two things. A selector. A selector says what gets this style rule. What things on the page does this style rule apply to? We then have a list of attributes and values. Things that we want to change from the browser's default. So, if we want The body tag. Well, let's let's do this. H1. Let's say. I might want to specify a background of blue and a color of white. The background, of course, is the background color. The color is the color of the text. So if I say background blue, color white, this is what we'll get. So the H1 looks like that. Yes? So if you have more than one H1, can you like specify? Okay, excellent question. Let's do that with H2s, because right now we have two H2s. All right, so let's do that with H2s. So I'll say H2, background gray. Yes, I did. Color black. Now, as you noticed, because there's two H2s, both of them get that rule. All right. Is there a way to make one of them one color and one of them another color? Yes, there is. We'll talk about that, but not right now. All right. If you want, if it's something that you want to do for one of your labs, we can talk about it in lab today if you want. But uh, I, I kind of want to just continue on this, this uh, stretch without um, diverting. All right? Now, now remember, it's not meant to look good. color of red.
second. There we go. Question? Can you do uh, like pictures as backgrounds? Yes, you can. I was trying to do it yesterday, but yeah. uh, we'll talk about that probably next week when we talk about pictures. Okay. Um, but you absolutely can. Now, CSS, the C in CSS stands for cascading. What does cascading mean? Falling. What, pardon me? I was going to say falling like a... Falling like a waterfall. Like a waterfall, yeah. All right. So you go from the top on down. So for example, I said the whole body is red. So the whole body is red. Everything in the body is red. The list in the body is red. The paragraph is red. The footer is red. Now, these are blue and gray. Why are these blue and gray? Because I put something more specific to it. So, if I don't specify a style rule for something, the element gets a style rule of its parent. All right? So, I didn't put a style rule for the paragraph. So, which style rule applies? The style rule that I applied to the body. I did put a style rule for the H1s and H2s, and that's the style rule that applies. So the H1s and the H2s get that. All right? Watch this. If I were to say the color's white on the body, and I don't specify a color for H1, it's going to get the background attribute from the H1 rule. It's going to get the color attribute from the body rule. All right? So everything in the body gets painted red with white letters. The, the H1, though, the background is going to be blue. I didn't specify what color the letters are, so it gets a style rule of its parent. So if there's a style rule defined for a specific element, that overrules the style rule of its parent. If there isn't a style rule for it, then the parent's style rule applies. So in this case, even though I didn't say the H1s are white, they're going to be white because the body is white. And everything is the body is going to have white font unless I specify otherwise. Now, these are pretty bold colors, for lack of a better word. right? These aren't particularly attractive. All right? um, there's some people that really have a knack for picking out good colors. All right? You know, you just you, you know you look at the clothes that they wear, and it's like, wow, they really match that outfit. That looks great, right? And there, there's some folks like me, right, that you know just do our best and and give it a shot. Fortunately, colors and optics is really a science. So there are there there's there's scientific reasons why certain colors look better together. All right, and therefore artists for a long time have used what are called color wheels. So if you're painting something, you can see like what goes good with what. And some of those color wheels are online. So I could say, I'm going to go in, I'm going to Google HTML color generator. And I'm going to find one that I like. And first of all, There's a whole bunch of HTML color names that you can use. Green, aqua, teal, there's, there's a whole bunch of them. So you can go through a list of HTML color names and get these varying shades of things. I just picked the basic ones because I knew that blue and red and white were going to be there. But there's also something called hex codes that we're going to talk about. I'm going to go here to the color scheme designer and I'm going to pick colors that go together. And I'm going to go here, and I can rotate around this color wheel. So I can kind of pick sort of the main theme that I want it to be, the main shade. So for this one, I don't know. Usually we think of blue as being a cool color. You know, cool as in like cold temperature-wise. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to pick a shade of blue for this site. All right, that seems good for the Winter Olympics. So I'm going to pick this color palette. All right. Now, there's different kinds of color palette. I went with monochromatic, which means it's shades of one color. 
There's also adjacent colors, which are sort of colors with accents. And there are triads, which are three color, color schemes, and tetrads. But I'm going to go with the basic monochromatic. And if I click on any of these colors, it will show me what is called the hex code. The hex code is essentially a six-digit code that describes a color. We won't have time to talk about hex codes today, but we will next time. All right? So, for example, I might click on this, and it shows me that the hex code is 7B85AD. It's a shame. Oh, I can copy it. Good. So I'm going to put the body of this. Seven five seven B eight five A D. And I'm going to go back here and maybe for the H ones I want to have this as a background. So instead of saying background blue, I can say background pound sign, and then I could put the hex code. And then finally, my H2s, maybe I want this as the background. 515E91. So I can set the background of all these. And I look at it, and now we're starting to get colors that look better together. Now, there's still some problems, right? That H1 probably should have white or a lighter color as its text color. So I'll do that. And the links are a little hard to read. Well, maybe not. But I could deal with those uh, next time. Here we're moving in the direction of having a nicer color palette instead of just picking wild colors. So you don't have to be an expert in blending colors and, and, and combining colors and matching colors. Uh, there are online color wheels that will help you generate color schemes for your site. All right? Next time, we're going to go into this more detail, all right? Uh, and we'll, we'll play around a little bit more with the CSS. We'll get into doing images with, uh, to put images on our page and images with our CSS, all right? Uh, and then from here on in, we're going to be doing a mix of things. We're going to be doing some CSS and some HTML for just about all the rest of the semester. All right, that's all I had for today. I'll see you in lab.